So this script takes a folder of texture maps and creates a shading network from them. When you first install the script into your scripts folder, you want to run this command to load it. And the first time you do this, it should create this shelf button on your current shelf, which is just the import command as well as the start command for the script. So I'll go ahead and click that. And from here, I just want to select the folder to create a material from. I can select one folder or even multiple to create multiple materials at once. And then on the right side, I want to select the shading template to use. So uh, this is what makes it so versatile is uh, you can create a template for any kind of shader, any setup you might need, um, and then have that as a template to create you know, more materials from. And of course, I'll get into how to create these. It's pretty simple. But for now, I'll just use the one I use 99% of the time, which is the Redshift standard. And I'll click Create. And it's going to loop through those folders and create a material from each. Um, so you can see there's all those maps are being used. And I can just take a look at a few of these. And, um, and that's pretty much it on the use side. Let me go ahead and show you how those shading templates work. So a shading template is basically just an empty Maya scene with a shading network in it. And the idea is you set up this network exactly as you want it to be. And then you tell the script to use this as a template to create shaders from. Um, the only important thing, the only essential part of this is that there's a shading group specifically called SG. Um, that's kind of like the root of the material. From there, you can go crazy with whatever kind of connections, any type of nodes from whatever render engine, doesn't matter. Um, all that matters is that SG is there. So I've got a redshift material. I can tweak the parameters if I need to. Um, obviously all the color management stuff. Where it gets a little tricky is the file association. So how does the script know which file should go to the diffuse, for example? And the solution I came up with is basically to use tags, which are stored in the node's notes. And the script is going to use these tags and search the file name for the tags. And if it finds a match, it assigns it to that file. So to be more specific, um, if I go ahead and open this in the attribute editor, you can see in the notes section here, I've got that list of tags. Um, and it, this might be collapsed or hidden, which you can show through here. But every node in Maya has these notes, uh, this note section. And that's where you want to put the tags. So for, for diffuse, for example, you can see I've got a bunch of different ones for color, base color, diffuse, albedo, et cetera. And so here's a, you know, a pretty standard material. In this case, the diffuse is referred to as base color. So the script is just going to go down this list and search the file name for these tags. And it's going to find a match here and then say, okay, this, this file belongs to this file node. Now the tags aren't case sensitive, but what you do want to be careful of is just common strings of characters. So for example, the normal map in this case is just referred to as N and this is pretty common. Um, so you might think the tag for that should just be the letter N, but the problem is this, you know, the letter N just appears in words in general. So this would return a lot of false positives. Um, in this case, all these would be determined to be normal maps since N is in the word granite itself. So um, adding these extra characters for these will help eliminate those false positives. So for example, if I just grab this one, which would be picked up in this case and do just a search for that, you can see it's grabbing this whole underscore N period, not just the N itself. So the tags for all these file nodes cover pretty much uh, the most common scenarios. I've been using this template for quite a while and haven't had to append any tags recently. So if you need to, I would say start from this um, and create a template from this. I mean, you could start from scratch, but I would say just start with these file nodes. And then if you want to swap out the Redshift material for, you know, an Arnold material or V-Ray or whatever, or just a Lambert or something, um, go from there. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, figuring out which tags you need. Um, and if you do, of course, run into a unique scenario, you can just add the whichever tags you might need and uh, you know your template is good to go from there. One other thing is auto cleanup. Um, so the script is automatically gonna delete nodes it didn't find a texture for. So you can see there's a lot of uh, file nodes here, but most of these are not gonna always be used. And so the script will just automatically discard those. Um, in situations where there's more than one node for, so for example, the normal map also has this like bump conversion node. Um, what you want to do is just copy the tags from that file node, paste it onto the, whatever extra nodes you need. So color corrections, multiply nodes, whatever extra shading nodes, just copy and paste the tags that they're associated with. And the script will automatically delete those as well. And so once you're done, you want to save the scene to the shader templates folder. If I run the script, I can press this button here to open up that in a file browser, but it's just the location of the script. And then there's a folder called shader templates. Uh, so you want to save that scene into this folder. Um, I'll just make a copy of one of these just to pretend I made a new template. And then next time you run the script, that template will be available in the list on the right. The last thing I wanted to show was automatic material replacement. So if you have a material in your scene and you're importing a material with the same name, it's automatically going to replace it. So this is a boot I modeled and then I painted it in Substance Painter. And so I go ahead and go to the output location for that. 
You can see I've got, uh, there's, there's a bunch of materials. This was part of a full character, so there's multiple materials. I'm just doing the boot in this case. But you can see that boot material here. Same name as the material in Maya. So when I create this, it's automatically going to plug that into the shader. And it's not that important for one material, but you can imagine in situations like the full character where it had several materials, it could save a lot of time. The name of the material actually doesn't matter. In fact, I could just delete it completely. All that matters is the shading group. So the shading group should be called the name of the material plus SG or the name of the material plus underscore SG. Either of these are fine, um, but this is actually what it's looking for to replace the material with. So if it finds this in the scene, when you go ahead and run the script, it's going to apply that to that shading group. And again, the material itself actually doesn't matter.